All right, Natasha Oda, congratulations, first off, on being named to Team Canada for the Tokyo Olympic Games and the marathon. Thank you very much. You know, you spent seven, eight years uh, focusing on the 10,000 meters, you know, the national record. Why now did you decide to, or December, uh, take a, a crack at the uh, marathon distance? Well, the plan had always been to do a marathon after the Tokyo Olympics. Um, and when the pandemic hit, I was like, well, I don't want to wait any, any longer. I really want to see what I can do. And I really want to run a marathon. So um, we thought maybe Houston would happen and in January. And so we, in September, we're like, okay, we're going to train towards that. And then, you know, end of September, we found out about the Arizona marathon project and there was 13 weeks to go or 12 and a half. And we thought this is our opportunity. So we went full in and uh, good thing because Houston was canceled. So, yeah. <clears throat> now, after your post-race interview, uh, after the Chandler, Arizona marathon, you said that uh, in the spring, you would probably take another crack at the 10,000 again. That didn't happen. Uh, are you, you gave up on that sort of, or what's the scoop there? Yeah, when I got home from the marathon, I took a really long time to recover and I ended up having some really nasty tendonitis. We're going to call it tendonitis. I had an MRI and it didn't really show what was going on. And I just knew I had a lot of pain in like my hip and in my, in my glute. And it was just, and so we needed to take that, that time off. And so I ended up missing three months of workouts. And so when we started doing workouts again in March, it was like, you know, we need to decide now, are we going to aim towards, you know, a fast 10,000 in May or put all our, you know, eggs in the basket for the marathon. And so Lynn and I had a, you know, a heart to heart. And I said, I don't know what happened, but I really want to do the marathon. I changed my mind. I thought I would want to do the 10,000, but I really enjoyed the marathon build in the fall and I enjoyed the race and I want to run the Olympic marathon. That's what I said. I want to go and run the Olympic marathon. So we took our time coming back and I'm so glad we did and didn't rush um, trying to get fit for um, a fast 10,000. And whether I could have run the standard or not, I mean, who knows? I would have had to go down to the US and I would have had to do another quarantine and it's just a mess. So I'm really glad that I stuck with the marathon yeah and uh there's lots to navigate there as you just uh illustrated and uh you would have to come to a peak right because your your personal best is 31 41 59 mm -hmm. and the standard is 31 25 uh based on your marathon performance it looks like you'd be able to 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 approach 31 25 but it means a peak and if you were to peak around now then what do you or maybe a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. re-peak for the marathon timing that adds another element doesn't it yeah I mean it's it's possible like in 2019 we did a pretty good job with like I ran Peyton Jordan in May and ran you know 31 43 which I was really happy with we kind of came back down and then I ran national championships in in June and came back down and then I ran Pan Am Games and ran really well there. Now, when I tried to come back again for Worlds is where I sort of fell apart. So it's definitely possible to peak a couple times, three times a year, but um, I think for me to try and run like 31.20 might've been more than just a good performance. It, it might've been like, took me to the well and I don't know if I could have come back in time for the Olympics. So, and I don't even know if I would have been able to get a hold of like these super spikes that everyone speaks of and like you need a pair if you you know I'm, I'm thinking that they give you what a second per kilometer and I really I can't wear spikes right anymore like they just kill my feet I have arthritis in both my toes so it would be it's really hard on me to get in spikes for 10,000 so I'm not even going to run the 10,000 meter national champs in two weeks or in a week that are here in Vancouver because I can't wear spikes and I can't wear <laughs> Carbon, you can't wear any like of the stacked shoes. We are trying to um, organize a half marathon on June 20th. 6941 is almost the national record. So are you gonna, are you gonna 
try to dip to 69 flat. My current workouts would point towards that I am in my best half marathon shape. So there's no reason if I didn't get a couple of people in the race and some people to help me pace that I, and I have a proper taper that I couldn't go for the Canadian record. So we'll have to wait and see if everything aligns and if the race happens the way we need it to. You know, a half marathon is a big effort and it'd be nice to have that time to my name for world half champs next year. You know, I'm still thinking in the future, like I want this time recorded. If I go, if it goes well, you know, there's other things out there after the Olympics, so. Hey, Sinead uh, Diver can run uh, 224 at uh, 40. Four. Well, she's, she's 44, 44 now, now, but well into her 40s, into her 40s. Uh, age is just a number or 40 is just a number, really. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel great. I feel like I'm getting faster. And um, I used to constantly think I'm going to run out of time. And I'm just, you know, Melindy's really inspired me and the way she approaches it. It's not like she's scared. She's going to like get slow next month. She's like, I don't have an expiration date. It's not like I'm going to hit 42 and I'm done. So, yeah, um, exactly. you know, it was really fun training with her on the weekend and thinking about future marathons we want to do together. And so I still feel like I have many good years left to run. And I'm excited about that. Like in the, you know, four years ago, I was like, I'll be lucky if I still want to get to Tokyo. But now I feel like I'm just starting out with the marathon and I'm so excited about it. It's been really fun. I just got to stay healthy. Knock on wood. Yeah. So what about Melindy? Can you, uh, she uh, interested in doing the half coming up in a few weeks? Um, I, I think she was thinking about possibly doing the 10,000. Um, but as of right now, I don't even think there's any entries, but I think that's just because of the restrictions and people are waiting to see. So I don't know. I'm not sure really what she'll end up doing. So I'd love to have her come down and run the half marathon with me. That'd be so fun, but I don't know if it's going to work into her training plan. So Melinda, if you're watching this and we know you are. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, yeah i'd love for her to run the uh the half and i don't even know if the ten thousand champs is considered a national championship anymore so that kind of takes away from really wanting to run it i mean is there any need to run it even for like so a andrea sakafian with her uh giant Sorry. national record uh what a great run that was I know um, it's crazy. No one's near her. I mean, uh, you. She's already been selected. She's already been nominated. Yeah, no, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, there's. Uh, I don't. I mean, unless you go to the, the no one's going to get it done. In, uh, like here on that night. I mean, they don't. We die unless they have a pacer that can run, take them through in 1540, and then there's at least two girls that are aiming to go for 3125. I mean, I know Sarah Ingalls is probably running and I don't know if Rachel Cliff's in that kind of shape, but 3125 is no freaking joke. I mean, that's fast. So, and you have to have a pacer that takes you out in 1540 and then hang on and run another 1540. So that's a big ask. And, you know, in the States you have, you know, five to 10 girls that are all trying to do it. It's a lot easier when you can work together. So it's a lonely 25 laps, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. It's a long mm -hmm. race on your own. <laughs> Do you think your uh, motivation, the fact that you're you're still very, very motivated, has anything to do with you? Because it seems like yesterday you were at university running, and then you, you took a few years where you weren't too serious, and then you started to come back or get into it quite gradually, very seriously, and get uh, mm -hmm. faster, faster. So did that post-university period um, allow you to um, grapple with the notion that you know your university career is over you may not run again you may and then that, yeah. that allows you to be I was done really I was done when I graduated and was wanted to get you know a career and stuff and I went traveling and then I came home and I didn't get hired with Vancouver police that's what I had wanted to do yeah. um, I got I got deferred for two years and which was like, I went all the way to the end of the process. And then they were like, you were, you're great, but you just didn't make the cut this time. So, you know, like come back in two years or whatever. And I was like, 
all right. And then, you know, it ended up just sort of not, I didn't want to go that way again. And um, I got back into running and I just continued to improve. So I went that 35, way. 35, 33, 32, 31. Yeah, you just yeah. keep getting faster and faster over the years. Obviously, your your eyes are on, your focus is on, um, well, first of all, a half coming up, but certainly, uh, you know, Tokyo, of course, Sapporo. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and you want to stay focused on that. But after that, mm -hmm. the currently the half marathon record is within your grasp. So are you going to chase that after if, if you're going to stick to the marathon too? Because you can only do a couple of really good marathons a year. So yeah. are you going to go after that 68 time? Well, you know, if I don't get it in two weeks, um, yeah, you know, I'm not going to chase it, but I want to, I also want to have some fun after the Olympics. You know, it's been a long two years where I feel like it's been so about the Olympics and I want to do some races because I want to do them. So, you know, whether that be, I want to go to do the Monterey half in November because I love that race and I love Monterey. It's not fast though, you know, or I'm going to Mexico for my 40th birthday in December. We've already booked it. So I will not be training for a week in December, things like that, you know, <laughs> that I will make my race schedule around that, I think. And then I'll start to refocus again in, you know, come January, we'll refocus or the, you know, after I get back, but the fall is just going to be sort of about fun and I'll probably run national cross because I would like to do world cross in Australia and mm -hmm. I would like to do world half champs in, and they're three weeks apart. I think one is in March and one is in late February. I'm not sure I'll have to look again, but those are both on my radar. And then um, definitely a marathon next year. Lots to choose from, you know, Berlin is definitely high on my list, New York, London, Boston, you know, all the big ones, but Berlin in particular, my dad is from Germany. I've never been to Germany. So, um, <laughs> the cat, I would really love to go run Berlin and go with my parents and then, and, and then go on a vacation after. So, and my Lynn's partner is from um, Switzerland. So it'd be easy for Lynn to come and Marcus could come meet us and it would just be, and it's fast. Right, it'd be a great place well, to run and run fast. So February is Miragami half marathon, and there's been lots of uh, PBs and records set. In any chance you'd go there? Um, you know, I was supposed to go in. Oh, I forget when it was 2016, and I got a stress fracture or a stress reaction four days before I was supposed to fly out. No. And I was so fit. I remember that. It was heartbreaking, but it's, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, would I, I would love to, you know, there's so many things that I want to do, but you can't do them all. So we'll have to regroup after the Olympics and then decide. Let, and I also want to see how I recover from the Olympics this summer. And, you know, like if it's anything like Arizona, then I'm not going to be doing anything, <laughs> and, you know, anytime soon. So, yeah. Well, you said you went to the well in Arizona, and uh, it's not like you're used much. to running marathons. So, but you know, before Arizona, I had been dealing with tendonitis, uh, hamstring tendonitis, pretty much the whole build, and it was like under control. It was like, you know, some days it was not really there, and in other days it was like. Yikes, that's pretty painful. So I'm not surprised at all that it flared up really, really bad. And then I also had issues in the front afterwards. So especially because I got home from the marathon and I was in quarantine for two weeks. So it's not like I could go and do shakeout runs or like, you know, I didn't have a treadmill in the house. So, and I was really, really sick, not COVID, but I got really sick. So I was kind of like literally just lying there and doing nothing for like 10 days where I was, and then I started to do some elliptical, but like with tendonitis, as you know, I don't know if you know, you need to keep it moving. So when I started to try and run again, it was excruciating. It was just like so painful. So after this marathon, I won't 
you know, as much as I would love to just sit and do absolutely nothing for two weeks, I will probably run 10 to 15 minutes every couple of days just to keep um, my dependence moving. Um, That's just what I need to do so that I don't, yeah, have the same experience. But I love to do nothing and take time off. You don't have to convince me not to run for two weeks. I love my rest, so. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I'm sure that you get antsy when you fear that your fitness is do- dropping and you want to maintain some level of fitness. I mean, I, I've been doing this long enough now to know that how beneficial it is to take rest and how, now, how quickly I can get fit again. So, yeah, and the build back up is always a little frustrating, but you know, after about six weeks, I'm pretty much back to where I was before the break. So um, I just, you need to trust the process and trust that recovery and rest is best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, that's exciting. And then, well, it sounds to me like uh, because uh, Sapporo, Tokyo is, is, you know, the summer and that uh, you want to make sure you recover because you've been injured before. Uh, Mm -hmm. perhaps a spring marathon would be up your alley and perhaps that would be your Boston crack at Boston or, or maybe, uh, maybe, uh, London. Yeah. I haven't even really looked at the possibilities because if I want to do like, you know, world half and cross country, they would be in the midst of a marathon build, but if I can fit them in and make it work and be back to the sun run, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) There's so much that I want to do and, but ultimately, you know, I do, the marathon would be the priority. So if we can find races in the buildup, you know, I think one of the, the blessings in disguise of the pandemic is that I haven't been able to race. And normally it's very difficult for my coaches to keep me from over racing. I want to race all the time. I want to go and make prize money and I want to go to New York and run the mini and I want to do this and that. And so now I can't do anything. So I am forced to stay home and train and it's been great. And it was really great in my build towards Arizona. And we did a half on our own then. So that's kind of what we're trying to recreate is, you know, we did the 10K um, time trial a few weeks ago and Lynn knows I was, you know, I like to run hard. I want it. It gives me confidence. So she's like, we'll schedule in a half and that's it. But, you know, I would love to be going to New York this weekend for the New York mini 10 K. I see the start list and it's like, you know, Melinda and I were both saying it'd be so awesome to fly down there and run 10 K, but we can't cause there's quarantine, but mm-hmm. So talk about that for a second. So, you know, with all these uh, personal best national records, world records happening on the tracks and the roads, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about the super shoe. Some people talk about doping's not happening as much because of the pro- the uh, COVID-19. But uh, with some of it, would you suggest that some of it has to do with the fact that uh, what you alluded to, and that is not everybody can race all the time, so they're they're probably fresher on the start line, maybe l- less, less niggles, fewer niggles. And they're focusing mm-hmm. on, on training. So they're, they're, they're doing one peak, one and done. Is there, do you think there's something to that? Yeah, I think there's, there's something to that for sure. A lot of people were forced to train on their own. So maybe they you know, were just pushing themselves to a new level. I think that these, you know, the new spikes, I definitely do think help you'd be silly to think that they didn't um doping i mean i don't know what goes on in other countries i know here i've been tested three times in the last three months so i know that i am we are getting tested here um blood and urine all three times (laughs) and they seem to come at dinner time lately i don't know what's with that but look at the team we've we haven't had six plus two maybe even three alternates ever Ever. i I, I don't know I mean, even Lindsay Tessier could technically, if a couple of people were injured, technically could be called upon if she's in shape. Yeah, I know it's crazy. And the standards are faster than they've ever been. So, yeah. That's actually another question worth asking. Uh, a little 
different than what we've been talking about, been more centered on your, your goals and stuff. But, you know, when the standards got bumped harder and harder, a lot of people were complained, even media did, right? And uh, look, there's, you know, you just said it, there's six athletes genuinely, you know, mm-hmm. on the team, plus a couple more that just as easily could be. Mm-hmm. We've never had that. I know. It's crazy. This We're just, distance running is just really evolving in Canada, not just in Canada, and in, in all the countries. Like you look at the number of women that have qualified in the 10,000, there's 35 women, if you count three per country, that have run under 3125. In the Tokyo or in the Rio Olympics, I think the field size was like 32, three per country that had run under 32.15. That's significant. Like that's 50 seconds. These women are all running. So there's no, no one can even qualify on points. And I remember when they released the standard 31.25, I cried because it was so fast. I thought, how on earth am I gonna run that fast? And, but you know, you, it makes you run faster. You have to set your goals higher. You have to train harder. And, and that's what people have done. They've really shown up in, in, all the, in all the events, the standards have been harder. It's, it's incredibly impressive to see and watching Andreas Sakafian run that 31, 13 was, and the way she ran so gutsy and so brave, you know, I was in awe. And even though I knew my record was going down, I was just like, she's just an, on another level. And it was so great to see a Canadian go and do that in that race. It was fantastic so yeah andrea ran a great race you called it in advance you knew it was going oh yeah i knew my record was going down the minute she told me she was going to run ten thousand, like a year ago i'm like there goes my ten thousand record (laughs) that's okay that's okay what did you have the half marathon record for a week (laughs) yeah 13 days so (laughs) yeah (laughs) well you can get that back i hope so you can get the house. She'll get it back, and then someone else will get it, and it'll it'll go around and round. So it's great. That'll be good for the sport. Of course, yeah. Good for That's us. Good what for happens in this sport? Records are broken all the time. So, right? Well, look well, at, I'm coming um, after your marathon, Melindy. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, Melindy, we know you're watching. <laughs> uh, <she'll laughs> <laugh at> <laughs> Oh, well, on. that was a terrific uh, Houston. She she ran. Have you had a chance to analyze the uh, Sapporo course, Olympic course? Ah, it's funny you should say that. We had a webinar today um, with Athletics Canada for the endurance events and Sapporo. So there was a YouTube video of the course that um, was very, we didn't really go into it. We can do it on our own. So I'll relook at it. But um, what I was told is that there is a climb at 8k and otherwise it is relatively flat so that is good i train mostly on on flat i could you know if it was going to be hilly i'd you know go and do some training sessions in the hills but i'm very happy that it's going to be more flat i mean tendonitis i stopped doing any hills because it bothered my hip anything hilly so it's good that it's flat so now we just have to worry about the heat Well, I think Sapporo's a lot cooler, though, than Tokyo. Yeah, on race day, it had been last year. It was, I think, 22 feels like 26 with the humidity. So Still warm. Yes, it's still going to be a huge factor, but, I mean, we have Trent. So he's like our secret weapon to getting us prepared for this. So that was basically what the webinar was about, was how to prepare. And I have a Zoom interview with a Zoom interview, a Zoom session with Trent tomorrow. And so we're going to make sure that I am 100% prepared. I'll go up to the Okanagan a couple more times to train with Melindy when it's hot. So they'll be ready. Now that there's no quarantine, um, we've been considering going to Hawaii um, en route to Gifu, which is the holding camp because it's hot and humid there and a great place to train. And then Alan and Lynn could come and then Alan can go home and go back to work and Lynn will come to Gifu. But I think we're more leaning towards going up to the Okanagan 
and training with Melindy where it's hot. And also Mike Van Tegum is now the coach in Sapporo, which I'm so happy about. And he's just like, he's so experienced and he's just such a wonderful person and will be really great to have there as just a good person. So yeah. Well, and for Melindy, I mean, he coached her as a, as a JD. And so this is so cool for her lifetime coach to be at the Olympics with her at 41, like so cool. And Mike watched me as a little JD and my purple headband and like, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I'm really happy about that. And personal coaches are allowed in Gifu at the training camp. So that's also good news. Not, not the Olympics and not Sapporo, but I'm happy I'll get Lynn and Gifu. It's the Olympics. It brings the level of anxiety that it doesn't matter how experienced you are. Um, it's nice to have someone there that's familiar and, you know, having, I think, Melindy there as well as a veteran and someone who is a coach herself, I think is great. So I'd be lucky to have her there. Dana as well. Like, you know, there's been some talk that, um, you know, it's not fair that Rachel doesn't get to be on the team because she's she ran that 226, 56, and you know, so she's faster than Dana and blah blah blah. And I'm like, Dana won trials in standard. End of story. That is that your spot. Written out in advance. There that is the criteria, you know, so she gets to go. And everyone needs to stop talking about it. And she's she's fit right now. No, she didn't have to run a proof of fitness. But she ran a 115.30 in training the other day during a workout. So she's she's fit. She's doing her work. She's keeping to herself and getting getting ready. And she deserves to be on the team. Like that's does my I, my heart does break for Rachel to miss out on another Olympics. Um, I, I definitely think she deserves to be on on the team. Of course, you know so does Lindsay Testy, but. So unless, you know, Trevor or Dana is injured right now, they've earned their spot. They've done what they needed to do. They're on the team. It's been hard for her. You know, I, I, she can hear the things that are going on in the background, the podcasts that have been going on and the things that people are saying, you know, like that Rachel should be chosen ahead of her. And it's like, must be hard to hear that. I'm sure it's not easy. And so she's just training and doing well and, um, yeah, she earned her spot fair and square. So did Trevor. Listen, Natasha, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to interview today with yeah. athleticsillustrated.com. Ah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yes.